Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and today we're going to be looking at Text Mesh Pro and understanding the way to install it, how to use it, and then how to program bits and pieces within it. Now, with Text Mesh Pro, I'm in 2020.3 and above, and depending on which version of Unity you're in, it may already be installed. You can check by if you select on your main hierarchy, right click UI and choose Text Mesh Pro. You may need to be asked about the Text Mesh Pro importer. If you don't actually get this option when that happens, you need to go to Window, Package Manager and search in the drop down which is the Unity Registry and search for Text Mesh Pro and it makes sure that's installed. So you can right click and you can again go to UI and choose Text Mesh Pro if you want to choose some text. You can use a button, a drop down, input field. We'll just use text by default. You can import the Text Mesh Pro Essentials, which will be just resources which you can add to customize things and make new fonts and whatnot from there. So if you import the Essentials, it come with documentation, fonts, resources. You can actually import the Text Mesh Pro examples and extras as well, which will con add a whole bunch of scene scenarios and scripts and other things which can go a long way to helping you out. So if you check some of the extras and examples and you go to the scenes, you will get a lot of examples of different types of effects like text which have outlines, different textures in front, met metallic sort of glows and ways to be affected by light. But say we start adding a new text and we just can call this our set and new game text. We have the standard Unity controls to be able to resize by holding shift and resize the bounding box around our object. We can just set that to the center. You can still have all the components to be able to change the text within the text box. So we can have text box here. Then you've got the font asset which is used to change the font style. You've got bold, italic, underlined, you've got strike through, and you have to set the, all the text to lowercase, all the text to uppercase, to all the words in the actual sentence that you may have, to capital, to a larger capital at the front. Then you have your font size, which is standard. Then you have an auto size if you need it to size based on the box that you already have, and you can set dimensions in there. You can set the vertex color, whether it has a gradient, so you can choose whether it has a vertical, horizontal, or a four corners gradient. You have the spacing for the characters and controls for the word, the paragraph, and the line. You have alignment, which is usually nice to center, center, especially if you're going to align something in the very center of your game, but it's just very much normal controls. Wrapping to allow it to go onto several lines. And then you've got controls within your material to control whether, as you can see, I can add a black outline. And remember, you can change the material or the shader type from TextMesh Pro to one of the other options if you want to take into, into account bevels and other settings like that. Now, one thing that often people like to know is how to create your own font, because normally with the standard Unity text, you can just drag out your font over by the font asset, but this doesn't work normally. We have to create an actual font asset through TextMesh Pro. Now, I have some already baked in, so we can use different examples of different ones that we already have. But say we want a font that we've got say from our computer or somewhere online. So if we've got our own TTF format and we want to change our font of our text, we can not just drag that in into TextMesh Pro. It would in the normal Unity version because we need to actually create a texture based on this. So if we go to Window and we choose TextMesh Pro and we go into the Font Asset Creator, we can select that and we can just add our this font type, which is delicious.ttf. You can keep all the default settings at normal unless you need to change the character set or increase the resolution, but it should be fine with the way that text is generated in this, no matter how far you zoom in, it doesn't lose resolution. So you can generate the texture atlas and you can just press to save. And now you can see that it's created a asset font that we can now use. Now you can drag that into the option that you have and we have a different style than before. And remember, you can use customization options on your material to adjust how this will actually look. Because you can see that our delicious material is for this actual font asset. What we can do is we, we can choose the three dots in the corner of the material and say that we want to select the material and you can see that delicious material is here. So this is our one material instance, depending on how we want it to look. So we could essentially change the face color so we could make it red. We could add an outline which is black and you could increase the intensity. You could add a glow. 
which could be purple here. And then say in this case, we wanted to duplicate the delicious material and just, I'm just going to call this delicious material version two. And it's going to have a different outline color to maybe a yellow and a different face color to zero. Now, if we go back on our normal text and add our delicious material version two, you can see that it's changed the customization options because it's based on the material and you can create as many materials as you want to actually do that. Now, what you might want to do is control any of the options to be able to control how to program this and make it work. So what you can do is you can start right click and just create a C sharp script and we'll just call this text mesh P and I'll call this controller will open up in Visual Studio. Now when we're here, we need to use a namespace at the top to access the actual methods and components that we're gonna need from Text Mesh Pro. So we're gonna see using Text Mesh Pro with a semicolon on the end. We'll get rid of our starting methods and we're just in here, we're just going to write a serialized field and we're going to say private text mesh pro as a UGUI because that's the script that we want to access and this is just going to be my text element or whatever you want to name the text that you're going to change. Now we can put this on a button press so we can say void button press as an example. This is just something so that when we press a button these things will change. So how do we actually change things on our button? So we can say my text element dot text this is the same way that you would access a Unity's text element on the text UI. And then you can say whether you created a variable or specify a string as this is my new text. So when we press the button, it would update the text for us. And you have a bunch of other options on the text. So you have text style, font style, color, font size. So what we can do is we could do similar sort of things. You could do my text element dot text style is equal to the text mesh pro underscore style dot normal style if you have other styles available because you press dot and you can see that normal style is the only one available or you might have my text mesh pro element dot font style is equal to font styles dot you can have bold italic normal so we might want bold in this case with a semicolon then we have a basic vertex color change which is not which is not dependent on material this just changes the vertex color so if you did change the material it would be different then you can say dot color is equal to whatever color you want to set it to so i can say color dot red for instance and last but not least is you can say my text element dot font size is equal to whatever font size you want it to be. So maybe in this case, we want it to 200. Now, if I just create a quickly a new button and I'm just going to put it down here and you'll see that I can add my text mesh controller script and we can add a non click event. So I'm just going to drag the text mesh controller script and I'm just going to choose the text mesh pro controller and I'm just going to choose my button press method that I created need to make sure that I add my new game button here. And we expect that all those changes to make that when we hit our button. So you can see that when we hit it, you can see that we changed it to red, we changed the text, we changed the size, and we changed different things within there. And remember, if you do need to change the material on your object, you can just replace that with either using the font shared material, or I do have a tutorial on how to show you how to change materials in Unity and I'll link that in the description. This was just some basic information of how to use Text Mesh Pro, install it and do a little bit of programming to control the basic parameters that Text Mesh Pro uses. So do let me know if you have any suggestions or anything that could make this better for everybody who wants to see. Do come and support me on Patreon to get access to scripts projects and so much more that you can't find anywhere else. Be sure to come and chat to me on Discord and check out my great assets on the Unity Store and thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.